In this part of the lesson, we'll explain how we can control the type of data returned by an Excel input box. We'll do this by restricting the input box to only accepting numeric inputs. There aren't any particular files that you need for this lesson, so let's start by opening up Excel and then creating a brand new blank workbook. We can head into the Developer tab, open the Visual Basic Editor, insert a module, and then we can create a new subroutine called Return a Number. Just as with the basic VBA input box, we can use an Excel input box to return a number just by relying on Excel VBA's implicit type conversion feature. So what that means is, although the input box by default returns a string, we can declare a variable which has a numeric type. Let's go with integer, for example. And then we can set my num equals application.inputbox. Open some parentheses. I'll ask the user to enter a number. Not a particularly interesting example, but there we go. And then if I were to use the F8 key to step through, when I display the input box, as long as I type in a number that is within the valid range of the integer type, when I click OK, this will work normally. I can see that in the locals window. If I view the locals window, I'll see that that value has been successfully captured as an integer. The problem with this, of course, is what happens if I type in something which is not a number. By default, the Excel input box accepts a string. So I could run the subroutine again using F8, and then this time I can type in whatever I want. So let's type in whatever. If I click OK, this is clearly not a valid value that can be stored within an integer variable. So let's click OK, and of course we get the good old type mismatch runtime error. Fortunately, the Excel specific input box provides us with a neat solution to this. We can use the optional parameter called type. This is one that the standard VBA input box doesn't have. But in Excel, it allows us to change the return type of the input box function. So let's just alter the code here so we can make this a little easier to read. I'll separate this onto a different line with space underscore and then type in the name of the parameter prompt. And this makes it a little easier now to type in another comma space underscore and then refer to the type parameter. Now the type parameter itself is assigned using a number and you can see the list of numbers that you're allowed to use in the written section below this video on this part of the lesson. The default number that's used is 2. This tells the input box to return a string. So if you wanted to return a string, you don't need to do that. What we'll do is use the number 1 instead. And this tells the input box to return a value as a number. So if I now step through this procedure again using the F8 key, we'll see as long as I enter an actual valid number, everything will behave in the same way it did previously using the, uh, the string return type. So I capture the value 1, 2, 3. The huge advantage here, though, of setting the type to only accepting numeric inputs is if I do attempt to type in something that is not a number, let's go with whatever again, when I click OK this time, rather than seeing a runtime error, what I see instead is a nice bit of validation. The number I've entered is not valid. So it doesn't break the procedure. It doesn't cause a runtime error. It just takes me back to the input box and asks me to type in something which is a valid number. If I continue typing in strings of text, of course, this won't work. But if I do type in a valid number, as long as it's within the range accepted by the integer data type, of course, if I click OK, everything just works as normal. If you wanted to see what specific data type is returned by an input box whose type is 1, you could simply change the data type of the variable that you're using to capture the result to a variant. If you then use the F8 key to step through, of course all variants have a subtype, so when I begin stepping through, the first time I allocate a value to that variable, it will determine its type. So let's type in 1, 2, 3 again. And you can see, hopefully, in the locals window at the bottom there, that the actual subtype of that variable is a double. So this means that I can type in any number, including decimals, within the fairly large range of the double data type. If you're interested in capturing the value as a whole number, as we did earlier on, you can use integer or long or even byte. And as long as you enter your value in one of the within the range accepted by that data type, VBA will coerce the double into the integer or the long, etc.